My name is Vincent Everts, Trend Watcher, and this week I'm in Barcelona at the Mobile World Conference. And it was huge. It was like 110,000 people who were there looking at the latest in mobile, the gadgets, the back office, the 5G, the artificial intelligence. Let me try to give you an idea. I basically did a tour for CM.com and I showed 40 people around at a time and showed them five different whole 60 different gadgets and it was really a lot of fun, but hard work. First, the announcement of the big flagships, the 9 and the 9 Plus from Samsung. And what can you make new of a phone which already has everything? It looks exactly the same and there's details which are better. For example, slow motion, a thousand frames, 960 frames a second, which looks amazing. It also is... Very good the camera because in dark light it's uh, better than your eyes. So that's really good. And there's uh, intelligence, um, artificial intelligence. It recognizes pictures. If you take a picture of food, it will know how much calories are in there. Uh, Emoticon is very big, but really they're only details. The only thing what's really interesting is that Nokia is coming out with the old phones of the past, but now you know this Matrix phone, the 9110. Now is 4G, has uh, Facebook, has uh, Twitter, has all these things, has 28 hours of battery life, well, 28 days of uh, standby and battery. It's amazing, and 79 euros. And they also have an, uh, a version 6, 7, and 8, which are about half the price of the big brands. They're now number 11, and they survived. Nice movie about it. Google was there with a whole Google Three village. Points. And uh, that was really uh, interesting because they showed how they're working on Android to make it, um, to make it uh, really secure and augmented reality and how many gadgets there are with Androids in there. So that's a really nice movie to take a look at. And Huawei didn't have a new phone that's coming next month, but they had a Porsche which was driven by a phone, an autonomous driving vehicle by a phone, avoiding all kinds of objects, very cute movie. What they did have was a chipset for 5G and all kinds of gadgets which are going to be there this year. There are no handsets in uh, uh, Mobile World Conference. Everybody's talking about 5G, but they basically had, uh, they, who I had the only one who had gadgets which are coming in the car or in your house and give two gigabit of data over 5G. So, but the handsets are not there, they're coming next year, but everybody's working on the infrastructure. HTC didn't have also a very interesting phone, but they had the new, hand, the new uh, virtual reality headset which was twice the almost twice the resolution, much better sound, and looked amazing. So virtual reality was not as big, but it was improved there quite a bit. Then I went to Ericsson, and Ericsson said, hey, every hardware which we've shipped since 2015 is now ready for 5G. The standard of 5G was only ready in December, but now they're shipping it everywhere all over the world, and previous hardware was already there. So the big networks are now working, uh, are now being implemented for 5G in America, in China, in Japan, in Korea, and also Europe is slowly starting up. So that's really interesting to see the back office uh, of Ericsson, how they're doing that. I, uh, that's some really technical information, how they're doing it, but it's, uh, it's getting very, very quick. And also, what's interesting to know about 5G, it is a thousand times more capacity, a hundred times more speed, it's 10 times less latency, and the phone uses 10 times less energy. So we are finally going to get phones which last for one, two, or three days. So that's really um, interesting about 5G. Everybody is really serious about it. IBM had some interesting uh, customer cases, and um, they, uh, th that was really interesting that how they use artificial intelligence to, for example, Vodafone has 70% of the chats which are now handled by... Um, by uh, Watson and the satisfaction of the people who have a chat with Watson is higher than if they talk to people so that was uh, something interesting another case I thought was interesting was Knorr a very boring food company from Unilever and they started a recipe app and they added dating and it went viral it really if you connect people based on uh, based on their food it was a very successful uh, way so that's basically what IBM was doing then, of course, Estonia. I, uh, were, identity was very big in, uh, in uh, the Mobile World Conference. We went to Estonia to see what's going on because uh, the chip, there was something wrong with the chip and all the chips need to be uh, changed. And, um, but what, what, what I thought was really interesting was It's Me from Belgium. It, Belgium had uh, an interesting combination of the banks, the telcos and the government who now have made a mobile identification tool which is now up and running. And instead of three people, uh, three companies working differently, 
And instead of the telcos doing their own thing, the banks doing their own thing, the government doing their own things, they are working together and having one integrated mobile uh, identity system. Very good. And I have a Dutch version and an English version for you in the interview. Then cm.com, which is, of course, known for... They do billions of uh, uh, SMS, uh, SMS messages for Google, Microsoft, uh, the big, big banks. But they're becoming an identity, mobile identity provider. And they're doing KYC. They're doing payment systems. So I'm giving a tour of their booth. And they're really going very fast into smart uh, identity and payment services. We went to the um, Dutch booth. There's a Dutch pavilion. Very interesting companies there, porting access. And I thought it was really nice um, that they, the tool Travis. Travis is a wonderful gadget. You talk to it in Dutch, it answers in uh, English or the other way around, or Chinese or uh, Spanish or French, 80 languages, and it's 199 um, euro. And they shipped 50,000 of them and sold 100,000. Last year, I saw them for the first time. And it really works well. See the demo here, because I thought it was impressive. Also, you scout for is an, uh, one camera you hang in into a football stadium for the amateurs, and it automatically follows the players. It knows when goals are scored. It makes uh, fragments, sends it to everybody. Beautiful, beautiful platform. And it costs 100 euro per football um, club per, per uh, field per month. So it's really interesting what artificial intelligence based on behavior can do. It's really um, impressive what the Dutch came up with. Then a couple of nice catches which I like. I do a lot of interviews and I need a wireless connection. And for $100, I can now have a Bluetooth microphone from Korea. It is now into um, crowdsourcing mode. But uh, for Bluetooth, a Bluetooth microphone is something I always wanted to have. And now I found it. And if you are um, interested in knowing what things cost, I went to the Chinese pavilion and I saw, for example, a Surface, a Surface knockoff. And it was 150 uh, euros. So that was really uh, funny to see that. A projector, a nice projector, which is also 150 euros, which can play Netflix and all kinds of stuff, um, which looked uh, really, uh, really good. We have phones for 30 euros in, um, in smartphones, and we have tablets for 30 euros. Here, very luxurious tablets for 60 euros. We had um, lots of interesting things like Bluetooth connection, Bluetooth uh, earplugs for $4. Uh, we also saw the Apple, uh, the Apple Earplugs knock off six dollars, and they really work uh, fine. So it's always fun to see what you can shop ship. So that was a little bit of um, the Mobile World Conference. A couple of other things. We're going to have 29th of March. Um, I'm going to be the chairman of a blockchain uh, and the government um, conference with Marloes Plomp. They made she made a book for, of, about Belgium and Netherlands, what the government actually can do with the uh, blockchain. So that will be. Fun. It's Dutch. It's a Dutch government. Uh, it's a Dutch version. And secondly, I bought um, 30 more miners. We had, um, we had 10 miners, which were completely worthless. In six months, they were completely worthless. And then we bought some new ones, and I should tell you how to install that. Last news, a little bit about the crypto world. Everything is a little bit more stable. No, no, no big changes here in the, in the last uh, time. It's also interesting if you look not only at the value of the cryptocurrencies, but how much trading there is. So you see in a month trading, you have about uh, 193 billion of trades in, um, in the Bitcoin. The second one is Tether, which is you know, a very controversial coin, which is totally equal to the dollar. And Ethereum is number three. It's also look interesting to look at that uh, thing. And if you now want to know, you know, if you want to explain Bitcoin and crypto and, and, and everything to your mother and to your friends, there's an 11-year-old which made a great book, Early Birds Get Into the Bitcoin. And he wrote a book for 11 years, and he has a deal with his father and his mother. If he makes more than 20 million in Bitcoin before he's 14, he can drop out of school. I thought that was uh, really nice uh, to see. And the first casualties are coming. Uh, initial coin offerings are very popular, but about half of them have failed. It's only 5% of the total amount of money. But there's a lot of these initial coin offerings which start to fail. We expect 90% to fail, but the first 50% of last year are already failed. Normally the most, you know, the, 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 with the least uh, amount of quality. Okay, so these are all movies. You can watch them, see if you find there's something interesting. And uh, I will be back next year after I've done my uh, skiing. And I'll be totally excited to see you again. See you then.